So I want to take one step backwards real quick. Um, you said the, the bagel versus the croissant. That is a cool concept. And I had that scenario running through my head as you were reading that out. And it made me think really briefly. When I first started networking, I used to kind of, I guess you could say, be in a a bagel, you know, and like a close circle, just group of people. And it wasn't really effective. And I'm like, yeah, I met, a, you know, a dude, uh, he's cool. We're going to be friends. And when I was in my mid twenties, it was like, okay, I guess that's kind of cool. But then as I started getting closer to 30, as the years went by, I started thinking, you know, I'm, I'm doing this networking. Yeah. I might meet one person and we may or may not end up being friends, but it's really not benefiting me with the business at all. How do I grow as a professional to really, you know, quote unquote, schmooze, uh, schmooze the room and work the room to kind of get as many touch points as I can and, you know, meet as many people as I can. And, you know, it's kind of like red light, green light in a way. You know, if you see something that's good, I stop, you know, red light, stop. I'm staying here for a minute. And this might be something here worth developing a little bit more and digging deeper. Other people, it's like, OK, green light, really cool. Give me your card. We'll catch up in a few weeks and just move on. But it took me a while to learn that skill. Is that I mean, normal? You think? I think Oh, yeah. I mean, I think that a lot of people have a misunderstanding about what networking in person is about. Um, it's not about actually collecting tons of business cards, and it's not about only standing with people you already know. What I, my biggest suggestion is to write your follow-up email before you go to an event. That would be true in person or online. And the purpose of writing this draft message is to get real clear in your own mind about your reasons for going. And write it to your ideal connection. So think about who's going to be there. Maybe do some research to understand who's the, you know, who are the audience members, who are the people. Maybe specifically you have a list of people or sponsors. And then write the message like, what do you want them to know about you? What, do you, what would kind of follow what you ask of them? And because I do, I'm a multi-passionate entrepreneur. So I wear multiple hats. So I have to always walk in knowing what's the thing I'm presenting first. And maybe other things would come up, and particularly things in follow-up messages could follow, could come up in follow-up conversations. And that and can change event attention. to event, too, as of well. Of course, because every event. It, it's every almost event like if you're applying for a job, you want to kind of cater your resume for that specific job or that industry or whatever to show those strengths. It's kind of like that with networking as well, too. You want to go there with your elevator pitch or your follow-up questions, have that prep for that type of an event. You'd be surprised how few people even do that for like two minutes before they go into an event. So it's about being more selective about what events we go to. If it's a virtual event, I would say look for virtual events that are well-produced, that have opportunities for you to engage with fellow participants as well as ask questions. Um, you're going to get more out of that than the webinar that you're watching list half listening to while cooking dinner on your phone, you're watching on your phone. Like if you have to be present and you have to engage, you're just, you're going to get more out of it and you're going to get a chance to meet like-minded people. And same thing for in person. If you're going to make an effort to travel, make sure it's for the right reasons. And then I would just also say commit. So if you go three times over 12 months versus three times in three months, same effort, but a very different outcome. Because if you go three times in three months, you become a regular. People get to know who you are. And even if you miss the fourth month, they could possibly still refer somebody to you. But if you go three times once every four months, honestly, every time you show up, it's the first time. No one remembers you. And it's just really about committing, kind of to dig in, have those three visits, you know, quick succession. And get to know people. I mean, I remember going to a new association and I got introduced through a, a board member. So I went looking for that board member and in the process met other board members, took selfies with all these board members and met one to the end to the other. And then a week before the next month's meeting, I posted all these selfies on 
LinkedIn telling, saying how much I was looking forward to meeting, you know, reconnecting with all of them. And then like go back in and I, rem and that helped me remember people's names and their role. So then I was able to follow up and have a real conversation with people about what they were doing, what kind of help with it. I mean, they basically were like ready to recruit me onto the board, <laughs> like my second meeting, right? Cause they're like, Whoa, honestly, it took less effort than me just wandering around, hoping to bump into something.